Why is my bank account dropping and I can't pay my bills? Yeah, because you're doing the exact same as everybody else. You need to do more. You need to fucking grind to do exceptional things. And that starts by putting in the reps, by putting in the hours on the mat, by putting in the time. You wanna be basic, do basic shit. Avoiding the distractions and staying focused. You would stop watching the news, stop listening to all this BS negative energy and focus that same amount of time that you spend bitching about politics or the market or this or that and put that into work, I guarantee you will have double the sales that you have now. Stop wasting your time worrying about things that you can't control. There is good opportunities in every time. I don't give a shit. 2008, there's good opportunities. This is when more people got rich than ever. I haven't watched TV in 12 years. I couldn't tell you the name of the vice president of America. I don't give a fuck. I care about my world, my bubble. Cabo San Lucas, real estate, margaritas, chicks, sweet whips, my little dog Lola. That's it. Problem solving in real estate. If you're not a guy that can go in and get shit done, stay out of real estate. If you're not a guy who can find a problem, put out fires, find a way around, find a way, make a way. If you are not this guy, don't get into real estate because you are gonna have so many goddamn problems, you're not gonna know what to do. Every day, my life is put out problem A, B, C, D, and it's 40, 50 problems a day. You have to get good at delegating and having the right team to solve these problems as well. Because there comes a point when you can't do it yourself. You have to have a team, you have to have assistance. You yourself have to be an ass kicker and you have to have a team of ass kickers. Mindset, believing you are number one, believing you're the best, and that's the way I do everything. If you're gonna do something, do it right. I was just coming off of retirement from MMA. There were physical limitations that my body just couldn't do. When it came to real estate, I knew that I had zero limitations. My only limitations were my mindset, how hard I was going to work, how much I was going to work on being educated, and the amount of interactions with people I would make. When I started in real estate and I went to one of the classes and I seen the room and I looked around at the room, I was thinking to myself, good Lord, I'm gonna smash all of these people. It's not even gonna be close. And that's because my mindset and my work ethic is so much stronger than everybody else's in here. And yours can be too. You have to believe in yourself and you have to think that you're number one. Because if you don't think that you're number one, nobody else is either. Maybe you're like, oh, I don't wanna be number one. Well, you need to think very highly of yourself if you're going to want others to confide in you for one of the biggest purchases in their life. Real estate is a giant decision. And this is a decision that not just anybody can do. There's a reason that 90% of realtors fail in their first year. And if you're gonna be the guy that's gonna help them to make that decision, you better be a goddamn winner. And now this mindset can be gained by doing little things in your life. I have to thank my mother for this because Although she had me at an extremely young age, at the age of 15, in regular mother skills, she made up for in belief. When you're a 15 year old girl, you believe that anything is possible. And she put that into my brain. She told me I could be a rock star, I could be the president. And she told me that every day over and over and over and over to the point where I literally do believe that I can do anything that I want. I've set my mind to it, I can do it. And I believe that you can too. It's just a matter of, do you believe in yourself and are you willing to work hard enough? Consistency, doing the same thing every day over and over again. Doesn't matter how tedious it is, but you go in and you get it done. In any sport, whether it's jujitsu, basketball, whoever has the most hours on the mat is always the best. You could be very good in real estate, but then you take off six months of a year and you go to Europe, you're definitely not gonna beat the, the guy that's doing it nonstop. But consistency, doing the same things that work every single day. Time optimization. This is a very cool saying or a very cool piece of information. And actually I took this from Alex Hermosi. Everything that comes out of his mouth is gold. All of the successful people that I know in my life have one thing in common. 
They make decisions very quickly. Now that doesn't mean making uneducated, stupid decisions, but that means if they want something and they know they want it, they go out and they do it. So if you wanna grow seven times as fast as somebody else or seven times faster than your competition, you make a decision in one day when it takes them seven days. And if you make decisions quickly and you take action quickly, you can grow exponentially faster than your competition. Selling the solution, not a certain property. I don't know how many times I've went in and seen other listing agents or agents that just immediately go in and start trying to sell the property. Oh, it's got three bedrooms and it's got a you know two car garage and it's got this and it's got that. The people don't really care. The clients, they don't care. Why? Because every house has this. You have to understand what is the problem. Why do they want to buy this house? Why do they want to move to Mexico? And you need to have the solution for that problem, which typically is a certain property, or it could be a certain property. I came from Washington where it's raining constantly. It's gray, the weather sucks. Everybody's depressed. Everybody's deprived of vitamin D. For me, Moving to Cabo and buying property in Cabo was the solution to my problem. It wasn't the house that I found that was a bonus, uh, finding a nice place. So if you have a, a client and you don't know the real problem that they have, then you can't solve it. I have some other clients that were coming from Hawaii and Hawaii changed up all the Airbnb laws so they can't do Airbnbs. They want to move that investment from Hawaii to Cabo San Lucas because Cabo has great investment opportunities, whereas Hawaii now has tons of issues, tons of problems. Because I know the problem, I can help find them the solution and I can help find them the perfect property. Resilience and learning to be okay with being told no. So in real estate or in sales in general, you're gonna get told no a hundred times before you start getting a yes. And if you're a guy that can't go and ask a girl to dance because he's afraid she's gonna say no, this isn't gonna be for you. If you're a guy that can't pick up phone calls all day long in the end, you know, take rejection after rejection, this isn't for you. If you're a guy that can't knock on doors and get told, F you, get the hell off my property, this is not for you. Being okay with being told no and learning how to deal with it to where the no's get less and less and less and your yeses get more and more and more. And the only thing that does this is practice. It goes right back to hours on the mat. Authenticity, being who you are, and attract the people that are a lot like you. I've just been myself. That's all I've ever, that's all I've done because I can't be anything else. I can't fake who I am. I can't pretend to be some, you know, high class bougie type person. I can hang out with those people, don't get me wrong. I can go hang out with the, the wealthiest people in Carencia or in Palmia. I can also go in the barrio and I can hang out with the poorest of the poor. One of my superpowers, I think. And that's because I'm authentic and because I respect everyone. But if you fake who you are and you try to be somebody you're not, people will spot a fake in a second. I myself can spot fakes in a heartbeat. That comes from traveling the world. That comes from growing up in you know rough neighborhood. This will not last in this business at all. So be authentic, be who you are. You will find the people who are like you. You will do business with those people and then you're gonna have great business. Long-term thinking versus get rich quick. In Cabo San Lucas, we have a lot of people who get into timeshare, get into real estate, get into any of these businesses where they want fast money, fast money, fast money. And they don't think about the long game. I learned this actually from a rapper. He was uh, representing E40. Some of you maybe know him. Uh, I used to do promotions back in the day. I was an event planner. I owned a nightclub back in Washington. And I would get big rappers who were coming from uh, Portland to Seattle. I would catch them in the middle in my little city that I was from. And I would, you know, give them some cash and have them do small shows in my venue. So I was working with Cool Nuts, who was working with E40. Cool Nuts was uh, my guy. And we did a smaller show. I can't remember who the headliner was at that time but it was some local guys and the show didn't do exactly what we thought it would do. And I said, hey, um, you know, I'm cool. I just would like to, you know, maybe break even on this. You think you could give me a little bit of a discount, you know, on your fees? And he said, I'm here for that long money. I'm not here for that short money. Of course we can. We did business for years and years after that. 
to this day. I could call him if I wanted a West Coast rapper. I could say, hey, can you hook me up with Snoop Dogg? And he could. Having these long-term, long-life relationships, these are the most valuable things in the world. I've had the same friends for 30 years. Why? Because they can trust me. Because I never screwed any of them over. I never did anything that's horrible to where I would lose a friend. I've always been there for them. And that's the same way I am for everybody. If you have a short-term mindset and you're thinking about, oh, just tonight I can get with this chick and you don't think about your friend or just tonight I can make this money and this, you know, I don't care about the long-term. This is a loser's mindset. You have to think long-term and long-term relationships, you'll be successful in this business and in all business. In real estate, you have affiliates. You have referrals. This is your biggest source for leads. You know, people have all these different funny platforms in this. I don't use any of them. I use real live human beings. Imagine that, real life human beings. That's where I get most of my business from. People think it's YouTube, people think that. People think that it's uh, my social media, my Instagram. The majority of my business comes from affiliates, affiliates and referrals. And the reason for that is because they know I pay. I pay a very good fee because I have a long-term mindset. All my affiliates know once they send me a client and once I get paid, they get paid. So I have affiliates that make thousands and thousands of dollars. I live by my word. I die by my word. And I will never sacrifice my integrity for money. So when you get paid that big check of money, when you get your first big commission check, maybe it's $20,000 and you need to go pay $5,000 to your affiliate, it's hard to do it sometimes. You start you start coming up with excuses in your brain like, oh, he didn't work that hard. He, he doesn't know about it. Maybe I should pay him less. Maybe I should uh, do this, do that. And that's why people will never use you again. That's why you won't get referred again. It's because you think short term and because you have no integrity. Have respect for yourself and have respect for your team and you will do very good in this business. There's nothing I love more than paying my affiliates because the smile on their face and, and making them happy, almost what happens every single time after I go drop off a big bag, they send me two more leads, one way that I, I grow so fast. Every single person that you encounter is one of three things. One, they are a buyer. They want to buy property. Number two, they are a seller. They have a piece of property, a condo, a villa, a business, a car, something that they want to sell. Or number three, they are an affiliate, somebody who knows one of the other two. That's it. Every single person you encounter is one of those three things and I don't give a shit who it is. And I challenge you to find somebody who isn't. Listen to the right people, stay away from the wrong people. When I first got started again in real estate, so many people said, hey, you're doing this wrong. Hey, you shouldn't be putting hot girls in your videos. Hey, I don't know, this seems kind of, this seems a little too much. Hey, don't, I don't know if I would do that. And all that was coming from people that had not achieved anything that I want to achieve. If I was fake and wore a stupid suit and you know, was, hey, look at this house, two bedroom, three bathroom, blah, blah, blah. I would have found the wrong people. Now I find dudes that look just like me. Amazes me, every client I get that looks very similar to me. We kick it and we have fun and we actually become friends and we go out and we party and we have a good time. And selling is a part of that. Selling is just, it's come so easy. I mean, I just hang out with people and we kick it and we do fun stuff. I never hard sell. I've never hard sold in my life. Like I've never, like a like real pushy salesman. I just let people know when the opportunities are there, when the deals are there, I give them my true honest opinion. I help them to find solutions to their problems. That's it. Setting big goals and having a reason as to why you set that goal. I remember when I did the first real estate class, I had a guy in there and he was like, what's your why? I was like, what the fuck, what the fuck is a why? And he's like, what's your why? Like, why do you want to sell the house? And this and that. I was like, dude, you are gay, bro. It literally was like, what do you mean why? I don't need a why. I, I have it built into my heart. I just have always had that. I work my ass off. I don't need to 
think about it. I just wake up and that's what I do. But if you're a person who needs a why, if you need to think about that, I think you're gonna be pretty shitty anyways. If that's something that you actually have to think about and you have to like write it down, I, have, I don't think you're gonna be successful. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. That should be something that's kind of built into your soul. Why do I wanna fucking win? Because I don't wanna be a fucking loser. Because I don't ever wanna go back to where I came from. Because I only wanna go up. I, I don't ever wanna trade in a, my, a car for a shittier one. I don't ever wanna sell my house to buy a shittier one. I only wanna move up. I only wanna kick ass and, and continue to climb the ladder. And I don't think that should be something that you should have to think about. But if you do, figure it out and write it down, put a picture on your wall, whatever you need to do, you know, have that as your, your motivation. This is the thing that when I'm on the other side of the fence, pisses me off the most. And if you are in sales and you wanna be a good salesman, I don't give a shit if it's real estate or what it is, if you do not respond to messages in a timely matter to important people, forget about it. You are not gonna be in business. When I message, my lawyer, when I message my assistants, when I message my coworkers, when I message my teammates, if I don't get a message back very quickly, I start to get pissed off. And this is the same way that high-end buyers are. This is the same way any good-minded business person is. If you do not respond to your messages quickly, stay the hell out of this business. It doesn't matter if you don't have anything to say. Sometimes I get people that say, you know, we didn't have any update, so fucking tell me you don't have an update. That's fine, that's perfectly fine. Just say we're still waiting, but say something. Because when you don't send me a fucking message, I get pissed off. I feel like you don't give a shit about my business. I wanna smash people. <laughs> yeah, if you wanna piss people off, don't reply to their message. The 80-20 rule. Now, if you don't know what this is, you can do a quick Google search. There's a book on it. You really don't need to read the entire book. Simply means that in basically everything in your life, 80% of the results are going to come out of 20% of the effort. That means that if you do social media, you do affiliates, you do, you know, you get people from the golf course, cold calling, 80% of all of your profits are gonna come from whatever you are best at. The one of the five things that you are best at. Maybe that is the golf course. I know multiple real estate agents where they do 80% of their business on the golf course. And good for them because that's an awesome way to do business. They're not trying to fake and be somebody they're not. They're meeting people on the golf course and they are turning those, you know, those leads into clients. They're becoming friends with them. They don't do any social media. They don't need to. They don't do any cold calling. They don't need to. They do all their business on the golf course. And it's a great way to do it for them because they love golf. Be who you are find what works for you, and then you 10X that. So whatever it is, the 20% that you find that you're good at, and then you just do more of that, and you're gonna get a lot more sales. Your network is your net worth. Everybody has heard this, I'm sure. If you haven't, you are the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. If I hang out with five people, two of them are worth $10 million, two of them here are worth $5 million. This guy here is worth $7.5 million. Because I am hanging out with these guys the most, I'm spending all my time with these guys, I'm going to be the average of these five. Hence, I'm going to be worth the same as this guy, $7.5 million. Why? Because it's the middle. It's the average of the guys I'm hanging out with the most. Well, why is that? Because we're sharing ideas. Because when my buddy Matt has a idea on a great new stock, he calls me and he tells me, hey, Brandon, you should buy this because of A, B, and C. When I'm hanging out with Brian and he says, hey, this development's gonna be awesome because of X, Y, Z, this is exactly why your parents did not want you to hang out with little shitheads when you were growing up. So dad, thank you very much. Thank you for all the ass whoopings I got. Now I am reaping the benefits from having a good dad who whooped my ass when I was hanging out with shitty kids who were robbing and stealing and doing dumb shit. I really truly hope that this helps you guys. So please hit the like, hit the subscribe. I'm gonna make a part two of this. There's a saying I like, you are where you are because you put yourself there. So go put yourself somewhere that you really like. I'll see you on the next video.